Hey there guys, Erica here from High 49 rc and today I have something very cool for you. So this is a contractor case. Um, I've got the logo taped over because, you know, big companies can get funny like that. But as you guys know, I recently got a motor lathe, or a comm lathe as some people know it, and I fell in love with it so much that I decided it needed a case, slash box, slash home. It needed a home. Uh, rather than just laying around with its bits and bobs all over the place. So, I put together this case. And this is a, if you're curious what tool this came from, it's a Bosch jigsaw. So if you guys want to go find one just for this case, I would recommend you do, because it's a great case. There's a ton of space inside, and really very minimal work that you have to do to get a case like this to the point where it could store stuff. So, let's go ahead and take a look inside. For some of you, this is going to be extremely, extremely satisfying. Oh yes, I went there, that's right. So this is what the inside of the case looks like. So to get it into this state, there were some, like, things for the original tool that this housed that I had to cut off and, like, cut out from inside, uh, which did not take me long at all. I just cut them off with a Dremel and cleaned them up with a box cutter blade. So I guess we'll go through this and I'll show you everything that's in here and the way that I put this together. So all the things that hold stuff, like these black things, this is EVA foam or craft foam essentially. The gray foam is foam floor mats. So like the, the, the puzzle piece floor mats that you can put down on the ground. It's literally just those contacts cemented together. <clears throat> and then the top layer is just some black normal craft foam, eighth of an inch thick. So, starting with the lathe, this is its home, back here in the corner. Slides out of there real nice. You guys have already seen the lathe, if you guys have been keeping up with my uploads. But that slips down in there quite nicely. Very happy with that. And then right down here in the corner, we have armature storage. So if I have other armatures for motors, the one that's in here right now is the... Um, is the armature from a sealed can motor that I was using to test in the last video. I just figured I'd throw it in there for demonstration purposes. And then over here we've got motor storage. So I've got a couple motors in there right now, space for a couple more. Um, and then all the extra space down in the bottom here is just for extra stuff essentially, or expansion space in the future. So I've just got my hack moto box, team brood motor case, or can or canister, whatever you want to call that, just sitting there for now. And then, all right, so that's mostly everything in this area. Let's move on to the peripherals. So this is this little section down here in the front corner is for pinions. And then over on the side here is for brushes, springs, and other parts. I don't have any brushes or springs right now, so right now it's being taken up by some wire and a bunch of bullet connectors, as well as the instructions for the lathe. So those all slot right down in there real nicely. Perfect spot for storing um, parts bags and stuff like that. So that's what's there. And then over here we have some oils. Got com cutting fluid and some bearing oil because when you're servicing a motor, you need bearing oil, or you should oil the bearings. That is, and I guess I didn't really mention, but this is this is designed. This whole case is put together so that you could take this anywhere and have everything you need to cut a com. You could take it to the racetrack, you could take it to the crawler course, you could take it to the top of a mountain, you could take it to the bottom of the ocean, kind of thing. You take it anywhere you would you might need to turn a com. That was kind of the idea of putting this together. Because there's so many little tools that you need for com cutting that I figure would be better in one place. So back in the back here I've got my just long tools. So my brush hood alignment tool. This is a well, this is a Trinity Spring thing. And the other thing that's back in there, if I quit fumbling around, <laughs> is a spring post nut wrench. And then I've got some tweezers for getting the little bushings out from the bottom of the motor can. An X-Acto knife 
for scraping out the between the comm segments after cutting and a sharpie for marking the comm um, before you make a cut. And then over here are some more tools. These are my favorite tools in this whole box. I I invested in a actually I forget maybe maybe my dad got these for me. Yeah, my dad my dad might have gotten these for me. So I invested in a set of hooty um, power tool bits which I'm very happy with and got the Hootie limited edition handle here. They uh, clip in with a magnet, they don't fall out, and I love this driver. It's incredibly lightweight. It's almost unbelievable how lightweight this thing is, but I'm very happy with it. Uh, came with a 2mm, a 3mm, a 1.5mm hex drivers, and two Phillips bits, but then I also purchased um, a, no, it came with a, hang on, wait, oh, sorry, it came with a two millimeter, two and a half millimeter, and a three millimeter hex, and then I also purchased a one and a half millimeter hex uh, as well, because that's a common size, and for some reason, Hootie doesn't make, or they don't have a driver bit that's one and a half millimeters, I'm not sure why, but those are all my driver bits there. And then over here is the BEC that was supposed to power the lathe. But, you know, that's not going to happen. So, um, we'll, we'll see what gets replaced there. Or see what replaces this in the slot. Because I need to come up with some other power source. I've got some other things that I'm going to try soon, hopefully. But we'll get to that. And then here, I've just got a couple other miscellaneous things. This is a Traxxas turnbuckle wrench, because on the lay there are some locking nuts for some end stop screws, so I've got that in there. Also got two motor can alignment shafts in there that came with the lathe. And finally, last but not least, if I can get it out, the, the little Altoids tin for the drive o-rings for the motor. I've also got the bit shims and some motor can shims in there as well, as you can see. So, that is a tour of my turning kit, or my motor lathe box, whatever you want to call it. Um, hopefully you guys have enjoyed. Hope you guys found this really, um, what's the word? Enjoyable, satisfying. I know if I saw this on YouTube, I totally would have because I love seeing how people organize things. That's just my thing, but anyways, thank you all so much for watching. Please leave a like, hit that subscribe button, comment down below if you're looking forward to seeing a motor actually get serviced in the near future, and make sure you follow me on Instagram at highway49r, highway49r, uh, that's not even right either, ha, <laughs> highway49 underscore rc. Thanks again so much for watching, and I hope you all have a great day.